بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر وی ڈسکس لیول تھیورم وی ول کنٹینیو وتھ دیٹ سو لیٹ می رائٹ لیولس تھیورم for the change in density with time this is our today's topic i will change the color first so let me use this blue color so i will write here continued we will continue with the dis discussion of the previous lecture in the previous lecture we said that corresponding to an ensemble of isolated systems first we considered an isolated system which was specified classically by f generalized coordinates and momenta q1 q2 qf then p1 p2 up to pf so we had an isolated system specified classically by f generalized coordinates and momenta which i have listed in this set then we said and discussed in the statistical ensemble of such systems there will be a density function which will specify the condition of the ensemble as a whole in phase space that density function we denoted by rho and that density function is function of all q's up to qf all p's up to pf and in general time also then what we did we first found the number of systems in the ensemble which at time t have positions and momenta in the element of volume dq1 dq2 this is product here dqf then dp1 product here we are multiplying the things up to dpf as we discussed in the last lecture this is volume element volume element in this phase space now the number of systems in the ensemble of the systems at time t that lie in this volume that in other words means that have positions and momenta in this element of volume of phase space which is lying between q1 and q1 plus dq1 q2 and q2 plus dq2 similarly up to pf and pf plus dpf that number of systems will be simply this density function times this volume element so if i multiply this density function this by this volume element i will get the number of systems in the ensemble under consideration which at time t have positions and momenta lying in this element of volume 
Then we said that every system in the ensemble, because ensemble is a collection of systems, and every system in the ensemble moves in time according to its classical equations of motion, which are Hamilton's equations of motion. What are those equations? Those equations are, let me write them. Those equations are qi dot is equal to do h by do pi and pi dot is equal to minus do h by do qi. In the last lecture, we labeled these equations as equation A. So every system in the ensemble moves in time according to these classical equations of motion. Remember qi dot is the time derivative of the ith uh, generalized coordinate and h is the Hamiltonian of the system. pi dot is the time derivative of ith generalized momentum and you know it is minus do h by do qi. Then when these points in the ensemble move according to these classical equations of motion, what happens as a result of this motion, the density row of systems in phase space changes in time. Then we were interested in finding Dou rho by dou t, partial derivative of this density function with time in the phase space at a fixed point or at a given point of phase space. Then to find it, what we did, we focused our attention on any given fixed element of volume of phase space that element was this element. We focused attention on this element. Then the number, uh, the change in the number of systems within this volume element of phase space was this volume element times dou rho by dou t times dt. So dou rho by dou t, let me write it, dou rho by dou t times dt when we multiply this thing by this volume element which is dq1 up to dpf when we multiply this thing with this volume element what we get this gives me the change in the number of systems within this volume element, which is my volume of interest in time dt. Then we said this change in the number of systems of elements existing in this volume element is due to the number of systems entering and leaving this volume in time dt, right? Then we found that number by focusing our attention on the number of systems entering and leaving the volume uh, through two phases. We consider two dimensional situation. The one phase was Q1 is equal to constant and second phase was Q1 plus DQ1 is equal to constant. So when we found the net a uh, number of systems entering that two dimensional uh, rectangle, I should say, when we talked about that, actually it was a uh, number of net number of systems entering the whole volume element, but we considered only first two phases. That is Q1 is equal to constant phase and Q1 plus DQ1 is equal to constant phase. Then we summed over 
all the faces of the volume element and we obtained an expression for d rho by sorry do rho by do t so let me list those equations so that we can connect to the today's lecture so there were some equations which we named one equation which we wrote was this one do rho by do t is equal to minus summation i is equal to 1 to f do by do q i of rho do i dot plus do by do pi of rho pi dot. This equation we named as equation 1. So first we obtained this equation for do rho by do t minus i to f a summation of do by do qi rho qi dot plus do by do pi of rho pi dot. This is dot here, right? Then this equation we wrote as, let me write that equation also. Let me change the color of my pen to distinguish the equations. So we wrote another equation for this where we use the product rule, we wrote do rho by do t is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to f, this is here negative, then inside the bracket I have do rho by do qi y dot plus do rho by do pi pi dot plus rho times do by do qi of qi dot plus do by do pi of pi dot. We have already discussed this result in the last lecture. I am just connecting it with today's lecture. It is minus i to f do rho by do qi qi dot plus do rho by do pi pi dot plus rho do by do qi qi dot plus do by do pi pi dot. We have just, uh, we did actually, we have used product rule here. We have used product rule here and product rule here. So we got overall four terms in our sum. Then what we did, we named this equation as two, right? Then we uh, use it equations A, that is Hamilton's equations of motion into, first we use it that independently. Let me write that equation also. Let me write it. So by virtue of equations A, we wrote by virtue of equations of motion A, the equations labeled by A, it follows that do by do QI of 
qi dot plus do by do pi pi dot is equal to second order derivative of Hamiltonian do qi do pi minus second order derivative of Hamiltonian of the system do pi do qi which we argued that this is equal to zero and we named this equation as three. What was the argument? Argument was that Hamilton Hamiltonian of the system is state function. So whether you defined it a second order derivative first with respect to you differentiate first h with respect to p i then q i or first q i then p i the second order derivatives will be equal therefore this difference is zero how we obtain the second order derivatives we use it the hamiltonian equation because when we find do by do q i of q i dot q i dot itself is what that is do h by the previous page do h by do pi do do by do q i of q i dot is do by do q i of do h by do pi that is the first term and negative comes from this second thing where do by do pi of pi dot pi dot according to hamilton's equations minus do h by do q i so we reach it here right then what we did, we used this equation three in two. When we do that, this term in the sum, that is this term, this term in the sum becomes zero, right? So let me write. So using three, equation two reduces two. So let me write. We'll change the color again. It's brown now. So, using equation three, equation two reduces. So it reduces to this do rho by do t is equal to minus summation i is equal to 1 to f. Then we have inside the bracket do by do qi rho qi dot plus do by do pi of rho pi dot. We named it equation 4 in the last lecture. Here we stopped in the last lecture, then we will move today forward. Now we will move today forward. So it is minus summation i to f do by do qi rho of qi dot plus do by do pi of rho pi dot. So this equation 4 gives me what? It gives me the very how this rho density function changes in time. But at a fixed point in phase space because it is partial derivative of rho with time rho is depending not just on time it is depending on all q's and all p's right 
So this is giving me the rate of change. Oh, let me write it clearly. So this is giving me This is giving me now the rate of change of rho with time at a fixed point in phase space at a given point in phase space, right? So remember why this changes rho with time at a given point because corresponding to the ensemble of systems, there is some density function which describes it a situation at a particular time. But what happens? The individual systems in the ensemble, which are points in the cloud, they move according to classical equations of motion, Hamilton's equations of motion. That leads to change in rho with time. We were interested in finding that. And we have found that using this equation four, the equation four gives us that rate of change. Now, we want to find the total derivative of rho with time. So what will be that? Let me write it first. Or equivalently, we can write, we can write, Change the color to distinguish the equation. Equivalently, I write this d rho by dt. Now it is d rho by dt. Understand it. It is now the total derivative of density function with time. What it will be? It will have two parts. One rate of change of rho with time when point is fixed plus the portion of the change in rho due to the motion of point if we move the point in phase space we don't keep the point in the phase space fixed right what is that term let me write i will justify that it is summation i equal to 1 to f, then I have do rho by do qi, qi dot plus do rho by do pi, pi dot. Right? Now think about it first. This is the variation of rho with time when point is fixed. This is the variation in rho when q's and p's are changing in time. Q's and p's are changing in time. That means points are moving with time. See, what is this first term? in the sum. It is do rho by do qi qi dot. qi dot is the time derivative of qi. In this term, actually, you if you think about it, we are using the chain rule. We want to see how rho changes with the change in qi. But qi itself changes with time. So I am finding the change of rho with respect to a change in qi using chain rule, I'm writing do rho by do qi times qi dot. 
Q i dot is time rate of change of Q i. So that means I am multiplying these two changes to see how rho changes with Q i. It is here chain rule in action. Now rho changes also with P's. So how it changes with P i, same we do the same chain rule uh, usage. We find its change with respect to PI and multiply it by the change in the PI with time, right? I will give an assignment. Think about this. So I am saying rho is function of all Q's and P's and time. First term, which is the partial of rho with respect to time gives it is rate of change where time if point is fixed because if point is fixed this second term this term is zero point fixed it means qi dot is zero pi dot is zero both terms will vanish those are not p's are not changing with time but when the point of observation is moving we are moving with the point there are two things one thing is we are seeing the variation rate of change of rho with time at a particular fixed point in phase space. Second thing, we are not fixing our point, we are moving with the points. If we move with the point and find the rate of change of rho, rho with time, then this is our quantity of interest, the total derivative of rho with time. So this, let me encircle it. This is giving me the rate of change of rho with time when I move along with that point, the point at which I am finding the rate of change of rho with time. Now compare this equation with equation four. Uh, let me use another color. I will use here black. Now this thing, this pen is not working properly, so I have to make adjustments, bear with me. So this thing, and compare with this, it's the same thing, but opposite sign. What does that mean? That means if I use equation four, we substitute for the partial derivative of rho with time, my total derivative of rho with time will become zero. So let me write it here. This is equal to zero. So this is equal to zero and I name it equation five. Right. Let me write it where so that you don't get confused. Where d rho by dt as the total derivative of rho with time is measures. The rate of change, the rate of change of rho if one moved along, one moved along in phase space in phase space with the point representing a system in the ensemble of systems, right? Right. 
So what does it say? It says that this total derivative is zero, right? Now, let me write it in the equation or I should first give it name. Now these relations four or five, four or five are both versions of Lavalier's theorem. Let me first write it. Equations four and five, equations four and five are known as Lavalier levels, it is pronounced and level, levels theorem. What's the difference between the two? Both are levels theorem. Difference is only one thing. In equation four, you are finding the rate of change of rho with time at a given point in phase space. Your point in phase space is fixed. In five, you are expressing this rate of change of rho with time, but you are not fixing the point. You are moving along with the point representing a system in the system of ensemble of systems, right? So this equation five says this rho is conserved in time. Its total derivative is zero. So this equation five is called or named as principle of conservation. Let me write equation five, which is the form of Lavalier's theorem. It is called principle of conservation. of density in phase space, density in phase space. Try to understand it, what it says. It's a, it says, suppose we have some ensemble of systems, first, and our system are in interest for which we have established or conceptualized an ensemble of system, that system in uh, question or system of interest is isolated system, right? With F generalized coordinates and momenta, specified by F generalized coordinates and momenta. Let me uh, start from the start. We considered an isolated system which was specified classically by F generalized coordinates and momenta. Then we uh, conceptualized the ensemble of systems of this system of interest and talked about the specification of that ensemble in the phase space by density function, then argued that each individual points, that means each individual systems in the ensemble of systems move in time according to our uh, Hamilton's equations of motion, and we reach it here, equation five. So it says this row will be conserved in time. That means if you imagine that there is a cloud of points representing ensemble of systems pertaining to an isolated system in phase space, now you select some representative point representative point is representing one of the systems in the ensemble and you move with that point in the phase space you follow that point in the phase space what you observe in your neighborhood there will be no variation in density with time this is the meaning of equation five i repeat if you select one of the points in the cloud representing ensemble of systems pertaining to a system which is isolated, right? So if you move along with a point in the cloud, you will not notice in your neighborhood that there is variation in density. 
It is in the neighborhood because we are taking only first order changes. We are taking only first order derivatives into consideration. Right? So I put this clear. Now there is another form we can express these uh, results in another forms. We will discuss now them. So let us move. Let me edge this page. C. By equations of motion, that is Hamilton's equations of motion. Equations of motion, which we labeled as A, one can write equation four as. I can write this this way do rho by do t is equal to minus summation i is equal to 1 to f then I have do rho by do qi do h by do pi minus do rho by do pi do h by do qi. Let me name it equation six. What we have done, we have used equation a to rewrite equation 4 as, let me check it first, do rho by do t is equal to minus summation i to f, do rho by do qi, do h by do pi minus do rho by do pi, uh, do h by do qi. Let me move to previous page, understand it, what we have done. This is our equation 4. So here, I replace it qi dot by do h by do pi. These are my equations of motion. I replace it qi dot by do h by do pi. And I can replace pi dot by do h by do qi. So we have done that in 4. This is my 4. So I replace pi dot by minus do h by do qi and qi dot by uh, do h by do pi. So I got this equation 6. This minus is because pi dot is uh, minus do h by do qi. C. Now what we do, we define a thing. There's a definition here which we use to understand why I have written equation 4 in this form. I will use first another color. Let me use green. We define a, an object in classical mechanics that's called a Poisson bracket. So let me first clear that, then you will understand equation six. Poisson bracket definition. What it says, see what it says. For any two functions, M and N of the coordinates and momenta the coordinates and momenta 
of a system the poison bracket the poison right here the poison bracket it is denoted by this curly brackets then we write m comma n is defined let me correct my pen is defined by I will change color to write this definition of Poisson bracket. Write in red. Poisson bracket Poisson bracket of M and N is by definition summation i do m by do qi do n by do pi minus do n by do qi do m by do pi so this is it is understood why the summation is taken over all the degrees of freedom of the system so let me check it then i will explain it it is actually self-explanatory still i will explain it so how we define poison bracket we have some system and which is uh, having f degrees of freedom which is specified by generalized coordinates and generalized momenta then there are two functions m and n they are functions of coordinates and momenta of the system then the Poisson bracket, which is written in curly brackets, defined. This is the notation. Curly brackets m comma n. So that means when I write Poisson bracket of two functions, it is understood. This is this summation, this right hand side, right? This thing. To understand it, this is not clear. This line. Let me make it clear. So. When I write Poisson bracket of M and N, this is the sum. So what we do in this Poisson bracket, you first find derivative of M with QI, then multiply it by derivative of N by PI, then you subtract. In subtract, in my negative term, you do the reverse. You find the partial of N with QI and partial of M with PI. Then you sum over all the degrees of freedom. This whole sum is in compact form. This whole sum in this compact form is written Poisson bracket of M and N. Now, why this has been defined? Because in classical mechanics, if you see this equation six, such, such sums, such expressions appear most of the times, or I should say in many situations, such expressions appear. If you see this equation six, if we use the definition of Poisson bracket can be in compact form written as minus times the Poisson bracket of rho and h. So this is how things become compact. So let me write that. So using equations, uh, this definition of Poisson bracket, equation six 
can be written as it can be written as do rho by do t we sometimes write it this way that's q comma p in the subscript is minus times the Poisson bracket of rho and h. Let me name this equation as equation seven. So this is uh, this subscript QP means the point is fixed. So this is also how we express Lavalier's theorem, right? Uh, I think uh, I should stop here. There is another uh, way we can express the Lavalier's theorem, but that we will discuss in next lecture. Now, before stopping, let me summarize now. So, if we have an isolated system characterized by F generalized coordinates and generalized momenta, F generalized momenta, that means it is having F degrees of freedom, then we can conceptualize an ensemble of systems, of such systems, and the situation of that ensemble in the phase space will be described by density function. Then we said that each point, that each system means each point in the ensemble will move according to Hamilton's equations of motion that will lead to change in density with time. So we showed that the partial derivative of rho with time that is equation four, which is one form of Lavalier's theorem, is given by this sum, which is given in this equation four. Then another form of Lavalier's theorem, which we write in the form of total derivative, is equation five, which is zero, which we named as principle of conservation of density in phase space. It simply says that if you move along in phase space with some point representing a system in the ensemble, you will not see any change in the density with time. That is rho is conserved in time. It is of course in the neighborhood of that particular point. So this another form, then we wrote this partial derivative of rho with time using the definition of Poisson bracket. So I hope it's clear, go through all the lectures, don't miss a lecture. And if you have any queries, questions, you can comment in the lecture. You don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you. God bless you. Assalamu alaikum.